بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني من نور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزاء نعوذ منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله بها بتوفيق تزيوم Again, our study of Mafatihul Hayat. As you remember, we were talking about the way believers should support each other. We already talked about the way they need to support each other uh, physically, like food, water, I don't know, financially helping them with their needs, also about a spiritual and moral support. Now, the third and the last part that Ayatollah Jawadi Amoli has is, he calls it Hemayat Atifi, emotional support. We should support our brothers and sisters also emotionally in showing attention, affection, care, sympathy. The very first thing he mentions is to make them happy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to a hadith which is mentioned in Al-Kafi said Man sarramu umminan faqad sarrani wa man sarrani faqad sarrallah Whoever makes a mu'min happy, masroor means happy. If you make a mu'min happy, you have made me happy. Rasulullah is saying. And whoever makes me happy has made Allah happy. Of course, happiness of Allah is a sifat fail in aqaid we have explained it's not that allah emotionally changes but it means that you are doing something which is in compliance with the will of god in any case maybe it's easier for us to understand that rasulullah becomes happy so if you want to make rasulullah happy you don't need to struggle. What can I do to make Rasulullah happy? One way is to make the first moment that you have access to happy. Especially if those who are sad, you can make them happy. Because sometimes someone is okay, I make him happy, it still is good. But sometimes someone is sad in grief, I make him or her happy. Imam Sadiq has a very a beautiful hadith about a kind of thing that happens in Barzakh. When you are in grave and then resurrection starts, Imam Sadiq says, إِذَا بَعَسَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنَ مِنْ قَبْرِهِ خَرَجَ مَعَهُ مِثَالٌ يَقْدُمُهُ أَمَامَهُ when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects mu'min from his grave, mithalun, something like a human being. Like, you know, Jibra'il, tamathala laha basharan, sawiyah, for Lady Maryam, appeared like a human being. A kind of mithal, maybe there is no physical human being, you know, but looks like human being. This is called badane barzakhi. So a kind of similar to human being in shape and form, but maybe without physical mass, comes with him from Qabr. And Yaqdumuhu Amama goes in front of him. فَكُلَّمَا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنْ حَوْلًا مِنْ أَحْوَالِ الْغِيَامَةِ قَالَ لَهُ الْمِثَالِ لَا تَجْزَعْ وَلَا تَحْزَنْ 
و ابشر به سرور و کرامت من الله عز و جه دیس مثال دیس بادی ویچ لکس لکه هیومن بینگ وود تل هیم ونیور هی هز افیر don't have any fear don't fear don't worry receive the good news that Allah is going to honor you so bring his stress and you know fear down and gives him comfort this mu'min who has come out of qabr says to this misal May Allah's mercy be upon you. What a good person you are. You always keep me happy. Ma zilt to bashiruni bi surure wal karamate min Allah azza wa jal. You keep giving me the good news that Allah is going to honor me. Don't worry. Who are you? Man anta. فَيَقُولُ لَهُ الْمِسَارِ This is the point. Please be very careful. When he asks this misal, who are you? He says, أَنَا السُّرُورُ الَّذِي أَدْخَلْتَهُ أَلَى أَخِيكَ فِي الدُّنْيَا I am embodiment of that joy that you brought to the heart of your brother in dunya. That joy is now embodied and is with you. Allah has created me from that joy that you gave to someone else. Sometimes it just needs a little attention. It doesn't need you go out of your way. If you go, it's still good, but many times, just with a little carefulness, with a little attention, a little creativity, you can make people happy. After making Mu'minin happy, the next heading is honoring and respecting Mu'min. If you want not to miss this point, if you don't want to do something with a mu'min that later you regret, whenever you see a mu'min or mu'mina, consider them like children of the king, like prince and princess, because they are very important and dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, you are also dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot destroy your own honor. But for sure, you cannot disregard honor of other mu'mineen. Actually, this is one of the very important facts. Whoever is honorable, honors other people. It's impossible a gentleman or gentlewoman, honorable person, would humiliate others. Karim always does a crime. It's impossible. I don't think Karim can be a mean person, can be a rude person. Karim is so kind and generous that some people actually may try to take advantage, and he doesn't mind. He prefers that people take advantage than lowering down his standards. Therefore, in our hadith says, Al Karimu Qadian Khadir. Khud'a means deception. Karim sometimes lets people deceive him. What does it mean? <laughs> Means he is aware, but he doesn't bring to their attention. As much as possible, of course. Not that he lets his life to be in danger or you know, but as much as possible. Let's they think they are very clever. But I don't want to mention to them that I know what you have done, what you have said to me or about me. Karim is overlooking. So, ejlal wa takrim mu'min, honoring and respecting believers. 
Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said Man akrama akhahu al-muslima bi kalimatin yultifuhu biha wa farraja anhu kurbatahu lam yazal fi dhillillah al-mamdud alayhi ar-rahmah ma kana fi zalik Whoever honors his Muslim brother or sister with a word that he says it with kindness and tries to remove kurba, the grief of that person would be constantly under the shadow of God. Shadow of mercy of God. As long as he's doing that. Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam said, Man akrama akhah fa innama yukrimullah. فَمَا ظَنُّكُمْ بِمَنْ يُكْرِمُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَفْعَلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ Whoever honors his brother has honored Allah. Now, Amir al-Mu'min says, what do you think Allah would do with someone who has honored him? So Allah doesn't say, you have honored my servant. He says, you have honored me. Like, if I honor someone's child, I have honored that child, but I have also honored the father, the mother. Or if someone from my community goes somewhere and someone honors him, I say, you have honored me as well, because I am imam of this community. You are honoring member of our community. So if you honor a mu'min, Amir al-Mu'min says, you have honored Allah. And then what do you expect Allah would do with someone who has honored him? Another thing is to have warm welcome for mu'mineen. When a mu'min comes to your home, or not necessarily to your home, to a place that you are there, comes to masjid, comes to your office, comes, to, I don't know, to a shop, anywhere a mu'min comes, welcome him warmly. If he needs a space, create for him a space. Hadith says, Imam Zain al-Abidin alayhi salam says, Man qala li akhihe marhaba. If your brother comes in the masjid, in the home, I don't know, any place, you say, marhaba, welcome, ahlan wa sahlan. You show some words of respect. Kataballahu lahu marhaban ila yawm al-qiyamah. Allah would write for him this as a continuous act till the day of judgment. So how important is to honor mu'mineen? And on the other hand, na'uzu billah, if we damage reputation or honor of mu'mineen. Rasulullah said, just look at the other side. Inna Allah yubghid المعبس في وجه إخوانه المعبس في وجه إخوانه عبسة وتولى you have of course seen the Quran عبسة عبوس عبوس is someone who looks very sad and unhappy and Rasulullah says Allah dislikes people that when they meet their brothers and of course Sisters, for sisters, they are abus. They are like someone who is angry. <coughs> you, you wonder what I have done. What is wrong with me? Is there anything on me which is wrong? Why are you are upset? <laughs> Instead of trying to keep them happy so that if they have problem, they forget. Now you make them feel very sad. And offended sometimes. So just the way you look, the way you appear is so important. Imagine now if we do also something to break their heart, what happens? Another thing is that when you become ill, sometimes people who, are, who become ill, they don't mention to other people. 
for different reasons. Sometimes they say we don't want to create problem for them. Sometimes they say, no, I don't want people know I'm ill because then they may think badly about me. There can be different reasons. And I don't want to say in all cases you must say. But generally speaking, it's actually a kind of etiquette and a kind of right of brotherhood that when we are ill, we inform each other. They come and visit you and pray for you. And they will also get some reward. This is an opportunity for you and for them. You will also get reward by creating chance for them to get reward. Generally speaking, maybe there are cases that you should not say, but generally speaking, you should inform. Imam Sadiq said, look, Islam for every little thing has some recommendation. Yanbagi lil mariz min kum an yu'zina ikhwanahu bi maradih. It is expected that when some of you becomes ill, informs his brothers that I am ill. Fayyaudunahu. They do iyada of him, they visit him. Then he will get reward and they will get reward. Someone who was there and listened to Imam Sadiq he said, I understand those who visit this person, they will be rewarded because they have walked to see him. Why this ill person is getting reward? Imam said, because he has informed them and now they get reward, he also gets reward because of causing hasana for them. So he has created opportunity for them. So he will also get reward. Ten hasana will be registered for him. Ten degrees he will be raised. And ten sayyah will be dropped. So when you are ill, you inform your brothers and sisters, generally speaking. Another thing which we have in our hadith is that you should correspond to each other. When you are in the same place, visit each other. When you travel, send a letter to each other, like family, whatever is possible. Now, of course, you may send electronic email or post, but don't <coughs> stop correspondence with Mu'min. At Tawasul, Imam Sadiq Ali Salam said, At Tawasul Bain al Ikhwan, At Tawazur, Wat Tawasul Bain Hum Fisafar, At Takatub. Mu'minin, to connect each other when they are together is to visit. When it's in journey, is takato, to write to each other. So you have such intimate relation that you must write to each other. Another point is that, generally speaking, a mu'min should not ask others for help. Okay? Don't ask others for help as much as possible. If others ask you for help, be very fast. Help them. There is a hadith about why Ibrahim والسلام, was chosen as Khalilullah. Why Ibrahim was chosen as Khalilullah? There are different reasons. One reason is you never ask 
Jibreel told him, you never ask people for help, but you never said no to people when they asked you for help. You relied on Allah, you didn't want to bother anyone, but anyone who came to you, you felt responsible to help them. You have become Khalilullah, like Allah. Allah doesn't ask for help. He doesn't need help. Even if he says, you know, man qarzan hasanan, it's for us, not for himself. But he helps everyone. Khalilullah, a friend of God, also should be like this. So, as much as possible, we should not take our hajat to people, our needs to people. If I can sort it out, it's better to sort it out. But if I do need to ask for help, ask mu'min. Asking mu'min for help is somehow like asking Allah for help. Because he's a close servant of Allah and he is not going to reject you. He is not going to later use this against you. He is going to keep your respect and honor. And sometimes actually for people who are very close to each other, sometimes, not always, if you don't ask them for help, they may feel bad. You may offend them. Or especially people who may need you. If you don't ask them for help, then they will be feeling embarrassed to ask you for help. So sometimes you have to ask them for help so that they feel also okay to ask you for help. So there are lots of details here. But generally speaking, just to find an easy way and therefore ask people for help while you can yourself manage it, don't do it. But if you have a good reason to ask for help, because either it's beyond your capacity or you want to make them feel happy and comfortable, ask mu'min for help. Imam Baqir alayhi salam said, La tas'alu ikhwanakumul hawa'ij fayamna'ukum fataghzabuna wa takfurun. Don't ask your brothers for help because then they may not give you and you become angry and then your iman is in danger. So be very careful. Sorry, this was Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. Imam Bagr is the next one. Ahbib akha, this is Imam Bagr alayhi salam. Ahbib akha kal Muslim, love your Muslim brother. Wa ahbib lahu ma tuhibbu nafsik and love for him what you love for yourself. وَكْرَحْ لَهُ مَا تَكْرَحُ لِنَفْسِكَ And don't, if you don't like something for yourself, then you shouldn't like it for another person to happen. And إِذَا تَجْتَ فَسَلْهُ If you need to ask, Imam Baba says, ask mu'min, ask a Muslim brother. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ And if he asks you, فَأَعْتَهِ Give him. There is a, another hadith that Hassan ibn Rashid says that Imam Sadiq said, whenever you ask a mu'min for help, it's very beautiful. إِذَا سَأَلْتَ مُؤْمِنًا حَاجَةً If you ask a mu'min for a haja, for a need. فَهَيِّ لَهُ الْمَعَاذِيرِ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَعْذِرَهِ See how much Ahlul Bayt want us to remain in good relation with each other. Imam says, if you ask a mu'min for haja, before he apologizes, try to find excuses for him. So you go and, for example, ask someone for money. Before he says yes or no, in your nafs, in your heart, find 10 uzr for him. Maybe he doesn't have money. Maybe now, for example, he has given to someone else, even if he's rich. 
create some excuses and prepare mentally yourself so that if he says no, you don't get angry and upset with him. If he says yes, alhamdulillah. If he says no, you already have prepared yourself. It's very important. Sometimes even with our father or, you know, I don't know, brother, we don't do this. If we want something, they don't give us, we are angry. But this should be even among, not just father and brother, all mu'minin, that we find excuses for them. So, if you ask a mu'min for haja, فَحَيَّ لَهُ الْمَعَاذِي قَبْلَ أَنْ يَعْذَرُ Before he apologizes, you prepare some excuses for him. فَإِنْ اِعْتَذَرَ If he actually apologizes, فَقْبَلْ Accept عُذْرَهُ is excuse. وَإِنْ ذَنَنْتَ أَنَّ الْأُمُورِ أَلَا خِلَافِ مَغَى Even if you think his uzr is not genuine. Accept. Another thing is that you should trust when mu'mineen express opinion. For example, there is a person you don't know, you want to do business with. Mu'mineen say this person is not reliable. This person I don't know is a person who doesn't avoid haram. Don't say I don't know, I haven't seen myself. When mu'mineen say something, pious people, God-fearing people, you should pay attention. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, I tried to ask someone to do some trade for me by sending some goods to Yemen. Enni aratto an astabdha fulanan bidha'atan ila al-Yaman. He wanted to send some goods to Yemen for trade and wanted to ask someone to do this for him. فَأَتَيْتُ إِلَىٰ أَبِي جَعْفَر I went to Imam Baghir alayhi salam. This Imam Sadiq saying. I went to my father and I said, I want to make this person my agent for this trade. My father told me, Ama alim ta'annahu yashrabul khamr. Don't you know that he drinks wine? He said, I told him, Qad balaghani min al mu'mineen annahum yaquluna dhalik. I don't know myself directly, but I have received this news that mu'mineen say he drinks wine. But I don't, you know, I have direct information. Then Imam Baghr said to Imam Sadiq, Sadiquhum. Affirm the opinion of mu'mineen. If mu'mineen say this person is not suitable because he is sharab al don't give your trait to this person. Don't give your daughter to this person. I, don't, I didn't know anything bad. I just saw him in the mosque. He was a good person. If God-fearing people say something, you must take it seriously. Another thing is that mu'mineen, if they love each other, they like each other, it's good to express. So there is a brother, there is a mu'min in community, anywhere. I see good values in him. I say, I respect you, I love you, I like you. It creates better bonds, it encourages that person. Brothers to brothers, sisters to sisters, it's good to express their love. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man 
Quran, there are two versions. Ahabba ahadukum akhah. If one of you loves his brother, fal yu'limhu. He should declare to him, announce to him. Fa innahu aslahu lizat al bain. This is better for their relation, for reconciliation or keeping their relation better. In the same way that it's good to our children to express our love to our parents or husband and wife, but also mu'mineen, they should announce and declare to each other their respect. The next thing is that when it comes to our brothers and sisters from other branches of Islam, again, we have lots of etiquettes and manners to observe. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Ya ma'ashara shi'a, innakum qad nusibtum ilayna. O oh, Shia, you are attributed to us. People associate you with us. Kunu lana zaynan wa la takunu alayna shayna. Try to be zain, zina, a kind of decoration, a kind of attraction for us. Don't be a kind of uh, dishonor and shame. It's very important. Every Shia must always keep thinking about this sentence of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. ما يمنعكم أن تكونوا مثل أصحاب علي. What stops you being like companions of Amir al-Mu'minin? رضوان الله عليه. May Allah's pleasure be upon him. فينس. Why you cannot be like companions of Ali among people? Nas here means public, means non-Shia, who at that time were Sunni brothers and sisters. In kana rajulu minhum la yakunu fil qabila. This is what Shia should aim at. Look at this. This is expectation of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. And compare it to what some ignorant people do. Imam Bagher says, why you don't become like companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen? So Amir al-Mu'mineen, who is the first Imam, okay? He didn't let his companions to insult, to, I don't know, humiliate other Muslims, or even to isolate them. Imam Sadiq says, you must be like companions of Amir al-Mu'minin. Then he explains how. He says, one of them, If one of the companions of Imam Ali, one of the Shia of Ali, was in a qabila, in a tribe, maybe with hundreds or thousands of people, فَيَكُونَ إِمَامُهُمْ he was so close to them and so respected that they say this Shia of Ali must be our Imam. He was the Muazzin. If they wanted to leave their Amanat and trust someone with their trust, they would go to this person. Anything they wanted to deposit, anything amana they had, they were saying, we go to this person. Udu marzahum. Imam Sadiq says, when your brothers in other mazahib, they become ill, visit them. Vashhadu jana izahum. If they die, attend their funeral. Sallu fi masajidihim. Say your prayer in their mosques. وَلَا يَسْبِقُوكُمْ إِلَىٰ خَيْرٍ 
Don't let any person precede you in doing good. If it's in Salat, you must be the best. If it comes in reciting Quran, teaching Quran, fasting, charity, you must be always trying to be the best. Every person should try to be the best. It's not that it's a matter of, you know, exclusivism. Every person should try to be the best. But you as Shia, definitely in everything you have to try hard because you are not just a Muslim. You are saying, I'm a Muslim who follows Imam Sadiq, who follows Imam Ali, who follows Imam Hussein. So you must show how following these Imams have, has improved your condition. فَأَنْتُمْ وَاللَّهِ أَحَقُّ مِنْهُمْ بِهِ By Allah, you are more entitled and more expected to be the best in everything, doing good. So, it's impossible someone says, I am a Shia, and na'uzu billah, he is lazy with his acts of worship or acts of charity or you know his social relations with other people and says I'm a Shia and no one likes him no one trusts him no one feels happy to be with him people find him rude people find him aggressive this is not a Shia even such people normally they are not loved by all the Shia maybe they have few people that they love them, but not all the Shia. And so for sure, not other Muslims or other people. And I always say, a sign of a true Shia is that if you die, or if you have any difficulty, you become ill, whatever, not only Shia, Sunni, Shia, Christians, Jews, whoever knows you should feel sad. If a true Shia dies, everyone who knows him knows that this is a loss. But if you die and only your family or your a small group around you feel sad, this is not the sign of being a good Shia. I am sure even tyrants when they die, some people feel sad. When Saddam Hussein died, some people felt sad. So it's not enough just few people or few thousands of people feel sad. What's important, this sadness goes cross ethnicity and faith. Everyone who knows you feels sad. This is a sign of being mu'min. Alhamdulillah, we finished this part. The next part that inshallah we do it next session is how to interact with sinners. This was about believers. Now what about people who may embrace Islam, declare faith, but they are not mu'min. They are not practicing. What should we do with them? It's very important. You cannot just disregard and you cannot just, you know, reject. These are two easy solutions. I close my eyes or I reject them. No. You have to find a very uh, delicate policy which is balanced to make sure that haram is not naturalized, but also people who have shortcomings get chance to improve themselves. So inshallah we will talk about it next session. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us equip ourselves with all virtues and etiquettes, especially those things that Imam Mahdi Jalallah ta'ala farajahu sharif expects from a Shia in the 21st century. We have to be a person in the caliber that Imam Mahdi would be proud of. That today he can say, this is my Shia.
And this is my community. May Allah, inshallah, help us reach that point. May Allah help humanity overcome all challenges that we face today, whether it be religious, spiritual, financial, violence, war, injustice, or illness, and especially this virus that has now concerned humanity in large or, in, or all of humanity. We ask Allah to help us overcome any unnecessary stress and worry and tension and be able to mobilize with maximum solidarity all the resources that we have available. And I hope, inshallah, before this month finishes, if we pray hard, that Allah gives chance to scientists to find a solution so that, inshallah, we can have all our functions, inshallah, in Sha'ban and Ramadan, inshallah, without any problem. We ask Allah for quick shifa and recovery for every ill person, especially those who are affected by this illness. And we ask Allah for rahmah and maghfara for all people who have passed away, especially those who have passed away recently. And we ask Allah for rahmah and maghfara and honor for our parents, whether they are alive or they have passed away. And we ask Allah to be very generous with them in rewarding their good deeds and forgive their bad deeds. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the last moment of our life the best moment of our life. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.